Back in the building, Double D. Ready, steady, Double D Podcast. We're back, baby. The Double D Podcast live from the Peacock Gym today. We're back. Yes, yes, it's been a while, man, but it's good to be back, man. It's been good to be back. It's good to be on my first Double D Podcast. I'm here with Heavy D and I'm here with Dean White. You can't get better than that. Booyah. So, topics of today's guys, where do, where do you want to start? Do you know what, right? Yeah, I think we should start on the um, AD. The Tyson Fury had a fight, had a fight, and he got the cut, which was like unexpected. Um, it was a hard fight. The Otto Wallen, the fight he had, like obviously that was a like a that was a that was a that that sort of was a it was a it was a turn up for the books. No one was expecting that. But once I think about the, the the face of the of heavyweight boxing now, like you know where does that where does that leave heavyweight boxing? Fact of the matter is, I think the, what from what I've heard that that cut is going to open up. It might have a cosmetic surgery, but I think that cut is going to open up. So I think it, 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 you know these cuts right here yeah, could take up to ten months to heal. Mm -hmm. So it might be better for him to step aside and let the winner of AJ Ruiz fight Wilder. That's what I, if I was in, in his team or in his camp, that's what I would do. Because he doesn't want to, he doesn't want with that cut to be, to be, to be facing the biggest hitter in the heavyweight division. That's not what you want, especially when you've got a cut, fresh cut that's just healed. It's going to, it's going to, and, and Wilder's going to, going to target that cut. You know he is. You know he's going to target that cut. And you know, you know what I mean? So, the, so what I would do is like give that, give that, that cut time to heal and, um, and basically, step aside and let AJ. Because the thing about it is, you know, um, he's going to fight. The, he's he's going to fight for the undisputed title in, 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 at some time. So let them fight it out, and they're probably going to sort him out some money anyway. And that's still not all about money. But the thing, man, it's about money. You get, might, they might give him, I don't know, two, two, three mil or whatever. Just step aside. Might be more than that. Take the step aside money. Let the cut heal, and then fight the winner of AJ Ruiz and Wilder. What's your thoughts? Um, I agree. I do agree. I do. I think uh, Tyson should uh, step aside, uh, take the step aside money, and um, maybe he can maybe even have a warm up fight in that process as well. No one expected that to happen with Otto Wallin, but I think I don't know if it was recently he lost his father. He was fighting for his father, so of course he's, he's going to be hungry. He's the underdog. Anyone that's the underdog, you can never, never, never back against them. Um, but yeah, I think. Uh, Joshua wins the rematch with Ruiz, um, and then he fights Wilder, and that'd be very interesting. And then Fury takes on the winner. Well, my thoughts on this is, there's a, I get you lot's um, idea of that. that. That is possibly he can, could, could step aside. Um, but also what you've got to look at is if the first fight was a draw, or that's what they, they called it a draw. In the history books, it's going to go down as a draw. But a lot of people had Tyson Fury winning that fight. So maybe he doesn't want to step aside because someone else could potentially beat Wilder and he wouldn't get the credit what he believes is due. So what really should happen potentially is that they just move the date. So he allows him time to heal and he gets his fight in um, and he gets time to recover. In, you know, maybe move it back to summertime, maybe May or June. You know, a big summer fight in Las Vegas or LA or wherever wherever they had it, redo it again. But give him time to heal. Maybe Wilder does take another fight. I don't know if it'll be Joshua or whatever, but I feel um, Fury uh, should give, be given his chance to try and, you know, redeem um, that that draw and um, see if he can get the get the W. But saying that, Joshua Ruiz, that's a that's a great fight. You know, um, I'm going to be rooting for Joshua to come back and um, get the win in that one, and then and look forward to um, maybe seeing who he fights in the future. I definitely know the WBC Deontay Wilder is probably on his mind, but like he said recently, 
he would like to fight Tyson Fury, you know, I understand a, 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 a domestic fight on world level as such because they're both like UK guys. The, the fans know them here. They can sell out Wembley Arena. So that fight will be a mega, mega, mega fight, you know. So I'm um, looking at that, but, it, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. If you look at the, the business, you know, maybe the step aside money, you get paid twice for the same job. It's, it's, it's a great move. But yet again, we got, we're overlooking something because Ortiz is fighting Wilder. Exactly, so, that. you know, we don't want to overlook that fight. Ortiz done exceptionally well in that fight. He nearly had him out. And um, uh, the interruptions and uh, stuff from the ref and the, 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 the officials um, hampered um, Ortiz's win. And then he got stopped. So let's, let's see what happens with that fight in the end of November. But, you know, it, it, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. Do you know what? Honestly, what? Yeah, I think that I think we are overlooking. We are a lot overlooking um, Ortiz. Ortiz is a quality, quality boxer, and he rocks. He rocks Wilder. Let's not forget that. Do you know what I mean? And the thing about it is, like, you know, maybe he might have Wilder's number. You don't know. Box is a funny old game. I mean, look at the last three big fights. I mean, with AJ being getting beat, Otto Walden almost beaten. To be honest with you, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be straight with this. I mean, I'm a Fury fan. But to be honest with you, if that wasn't if that if he wasn't a home fighter on on top rank, he would have lost that fight. He should have lost that fight because there were two big massive cuts. Um, so maybe there's a lot of boxing politics going on there. Controversial, I know. But you know what? The fact of the matter is, Tyson Fury was very very lucky. He boxed well, but he's very lucky, very lucky to 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 win that fight. But there's too much money in the line. There's too much money in the line, and I'm gonna call it what it is. Right? Yeah. Fact of the matter is, because there was so much money on the line, they gave Tyson, they gifted Tyson Fury that, 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 that victory. Do you know what I mean? There was too much money to lose. Too much money to lose. You know? It's, it's Vegas. Vegas, shit happens in Vegas, man. <laughs> shit happens, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, you know like, look at Canelo. Look at the Canelo results. Look at all that sort of stuff. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of, lot of skullduggery going on in, in Vegas. I'm a, I'm a bit lost. Sorry, I'm. A, I'm. A, I've had. I don't, you know, I wanted to interject a bit earlier. How do you believe? What you mean? You you seem to believe. What that Tyson Fury lost that fight? Yes. How? Look, come on. Sorry, no, sorry. no, 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 my friend. No, no, this is boxing. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah. You get hurt, you get cut. The ref done his job, and I, I do hear what you're saying. Yeah. The home fighter, they've got a lot invested in Tyson Fury, yeah. so that's why they didn't pull the plug and make him go down the manhole. Yeah. But. He boxed a lot better than I've seen him box. He took it to Wallin. He went to the body. He pressured him. He had to fight for that win. He had two big cuts, but he, he fought. And that was what made Wallin um, uh, make it. I think he saw blood and he stepped up a little bit more. And it made it closer than it was. So the, for me, I'd like to see if, if we did see the fight again with them. I doubt we will. But if we saw that fight again, if he didn't have those cuts, do you believe it would be the same end? I think he would have got busted up a lot worse if Tyson Fury had two eyes. Basically, in that fight, he was fighting virtually with one eye. He had two big gashes under that eye there, and he managed to still pull off a boxing lesson. And moments in there where um, it was a little bit close, but um, that dirty sod, Wallin, was using his palm and rubbing the cut and doing some real shady stuff in there. I didn't even think it was that close. I thought I can commend Tyson Fury, if anything, for going in there and fighting all the way to the 12th round with two mad gash, blood pouring all down his eyes and managed to go through the trenches and get the W. A lot of guys would have cried, bawled and wanted to pull out in the corner talking about I can't see and then start rubbing it into their other eye talking about they can't see and all kind of shenanigans. But he didn't. Like he said, he's a fighting man. He cracked on with it. And, and kind of boxed his head off at times, out-hustled him. There were times in there where Wallen did have good rounds in there also, but I think Tyson Fury done pretty well, pushed him back, went to the body, came back upstairs, and um, done, a, done a lot of work. He was quite busy for a man with one eye. That's what I saw. Um, yeah, you, you saw something different, clearly. Listen, they should have listen, they should have stopped that fight. If they should have stopped that fight, I don't care what anyone says, right, yeah? That fight, that cut was so deep, right, yeah? They took the piss. I'll tell you, if there was any other fight, right, yeah, they, the referee would have stopped that fight. Come on, like, we all, listen, we all see it. Look at the cut, it was so deep, man. They, they, they let that carry on. I've seen, I've seen fights. Don't tell me you haven't seen fights that have been stopped for less than that. There's less, there were less, less, less cuts than that. Less deep. That was, like, so deep, man. You had to have plastic surgery on the cut. That was some serious business, man. 
Sorry, but that doesn't um, take away from the boxing ability and what he done in there. So he, I, he actually won the boxing contest. What you're saying is because of the cuts, he should have lost. I say, yeah, but the thing about it is, boxing fights are, they are stopped. You're stopped on cuts. I, it doesn't matter about, oh, he boxed better, this, the other. Fact of the matter is, if it's a deep enough cut, the referee has to stop the fight. Has to stop the fight. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, I mean, it's not about, oh, well, because he boxed, he boxed well afterwards. That's not the point there. Fact of the matter is, there's any other, any other, any, you know what I mean? Like, you know, um, I remember um, Henry Cooper used to, Henry Cooper went Peacock's gym, like Henry Cooper used to train in Peacock's. Henry Cooper used to get a lot of cuts, right? Yeah, we know we're talking about boxing history. He used to get a lot of cuts, but you know what? He used to outbox a lot of the, lot of the, lot of the fighters. But you know what? You know, if you get cuts and you get a cut, they're going to stop the fight. They, got, they have to for the safety. They're going to stop the fight all the time because they actually didn't. Sorry, buddy. They, they actually didn't. They let the fight proceed. Should, and Tyson threw one clean and fair. Let me hear your uh, opinion, bud. Um, a, it's a good de debate between you both there. I, I, it's hard to um, pick one side to agree on there, but I have to agree more so, so to the side of Dean White because I believe that if he didn't have that cut, he'd have boxing for a like full 12 rounds. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. For, for, for the full 12 rounds, he'll outbox him. He had to change his game fighting style. He had to come out. He had to show, show the gypsy side of Tyson this time. Yeah, and I agree. Otto was doing everything he can, everything he can to, you know, what. So you're saying that that fight should have got stopped. So then, why wouldn't, why didn't Otto Wallin lose a point for for all that, all that nonsense in in his face? He should have done. So it goes both ways, you know, you know. Carmen's a bitch, <laughs> and I think Tyson went at 100 percent. Remember that happened in the third round, right? Yeah, he's got two bad gushes. I understand, yeah, but you can't tell me that for laugh. If the, he didn't have them cuts, he would not outbox him for the whole round. And he done well to, to cover up. Yeah, he did have them. He did, and he still won the fight by unanimous decision. He still won. The, he still won the fight for unanimous decision. He still that don't matter with two big cuts like that. The guy goes to war and still wins by unanimous decision. That, that's my side of it, and I have to agree with you, Dean. Well, I don't know if you've got anything more to add to that heavy, but I think we can conclude that matter there. I don't think he was... Uh... Can I have one last word? One last word, right, yeah? Oh, listen, right, yeah? Uh, listen, right, yeah? Fact of the matter is this, okay? All right? If that was any other fight outside of Vegas, they would have stopped that fight. Only reason why they carried on that fight, too much money was at stake. It was Las Vegas. You had too much money in the line. You had the Wilder, the Wilder fight coming up. That they'd be signed. Top rank are doing the, oh, the, the hosting the fight. I'm telling you, man, the, the, there's no way on earth they could have pulled the plug on that fight and let and let that guy win. That guy should have won that fight. And I'm a Tyson Fury fan. I'm saying what it is right here. Yeah? If anyone out there agrees with what I'm saying, let me know in the comments right here. Yeah? That fight should have been stopped. All right, so finish that debate now, and we all know there's only one Tyson Fury. Well, moving forward, I think um, <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is, guys. <laughs> moving forward, I think uh, there's been a lot of talk over the years about these two guys in the world weight division, um, Amir Khan and Kell Brook. Um, yet again, there's a lot of talk that this fight is potentially, you know, maybe on the horizon again. Um, it's an interesting fight. I'd like to see this fight. And, uh, and I, I said this last week when I did a few interviews. Um, it's quite a weird one because like, a, like a, Amir Khan said, this fight will, is, will always be there kind of thing. The public will always have interest in this fight. I think he went out there and cleaned up in Saudi Arabia, made a lot of money and he's come back to the table and there's still a lot, a lot of money here for this fight. And there's a lot of interest for this fight. Um, I like both boys. Um, you know, Amir Khan, I'd say, I think his twilight was a little while ago when he was fighting the likes of Zab Judah, um, Maidana, and those kind of guys. I think Kell Brook, he's had, um, he's been, been, been on the one for a little bit, but he's an exceptional boxer, very strong. He's got fast hands, powerful. And um, I think it, it will make for a great fight. I think uh, I'd lean towards... Kill Brook a little bit. I know the speed factor will be with um, 
Amir Khan as it always is, but he, he seems to get caught eventually because he um, overdoes it and then the big punch is catching. But uh, take nothing away from him, I'm a big fan of uh, Amir Khan. He's done a lot for UK boxing. I've got to give him credit. What, what's your thoughts on if that fight was made? And do you know what? I said I'm going to be controversial again. Um, I think that Amir Khan's just collecting paydays now. Uh, his, his heart's not in it. His, his heart's not in it. His heart, he ain't got no arsehole no more. He's just going for the... I mean, against Terence Crawford. Come on, man. The guy quit. No mask. What's all that about, man? The man's collecting paychecks, mate. He's collecting pay. It's obvious what he's doing, mate. He's just going around and all the big, all the big, the big, the big, uh, the big names. Is the reason why I don't want Kel Book because Kel Book is Kel Book will fix him up, fix him up proper, neatly in the screen. And he don't want that. He's a British fighter. This year, it's all right getting beaten by a legend. That's all right. I get beat by Terence Crawford. I get beat by Canelo. I get beat by these guys. It's all right. Pay me five mil. I'll take the money. But to get get fixed up and sweetly by Kel Book. For for a couple of mil, he don't want that. He don't want that. He knows that. You know what? He's gonna, he's gonna, it's gonna suffer, especially if it, his legacy will be tainted if he gets battered by Kel Brook. But I think now he's got to the stage where he's got no, he's got nowhere else to run. That's you know, no one else is. There's no more, no more other fights room. It's the Kel Brook there. Is is that a cold sack? Is that a dead end now? He's got the Kel Brook fight on nothing, right? Yeah, the public are not are not having any terms more. We're not buying into your, your bullshit no more. Amir Khan. So the Kel Brook, shut up, put up or shut up. Fight Kel Brook or shut up. Just go away. Go away, MA Khan. Go away. I'm sorry about South Hill. Sorry. A bit harsh. Sorry. Yeah, very harsh. No, I have to um <laughs> I have to agree with <laughs> oh, that's classic, I tell you. Wait, I told you you'd never get anything like this. Um I have to agree with both parties there. Um I think Kel Brook has just got that extra extra edge about him, you know. Like Dean was talking about, he's he's, he's physical. More a lot, I think he's a lot more physical. His physique's a lot more, and uh, I have to agree with Heavy as well because I think Amir's just in it for the paycheck now. Um, but let us know in your comments who wins that match if there was to be that match again. Do you know what? I I, I kind of I get it. Listen, these guys are here for the money. You know, uh, like I said, the twilight of uh, Amir's career was the times when he was in America and he was pioneering, like I said, fighting Zab Judah, Maidana, and those kind of level of, of opponents. And, and, and the boxing in the UK wasn't the mecca it was today. So for me, I look at him as, as one of the beacons of the people that was abroad fighting in America when it weren't, that, it weren't the in thing, when um, UK boxers weren't traveling and fighting abroad as much. Kel Brook went on the road... Um, uh, and one against Paul also, which was a, a great win. Another guy was someone like um, James DeGill went on the road and had some great wins. But like I said, Amir Khan was doing it a little bit before a lot of these people. So I've got to give him credit for that. And um, for me, he's trying to get the most out of his career because he knows it's coming to... When did he win the Olympics? Was it 2000? I don't know. A long time ago. Yeah, he, he got silver. Yeah, I know. But when did he, when did he get... Um, um, I'm not sure. They might be to 2006... Yeah, a long time ago anyway. So he's had a long, long career and he's made a hell of a lot of money. So I, I get it that he's trying to position himself. What did he make? Seven million against Canelo. Um, then he fought Crawford. He's got five million for that. Which one? Crawford? Yeah. yeah but, so that's 12. Yeah, so yeah. it's a lot of money, whatever you say. So he was offered another seven million to fight, fight Brook and he said, listen, that fight's always going to be there. And guess what? It turned out to be right. The fight is still there. Kill still interested. Even after losing those fights, he went to Saudi, made another seven million or whatever he made. He's cleaning up, bro. He's getting to the bag. He's getting to the sheets. He's getting all the the skriller, whatever you want to call it. He's getting everything, and he's smart. And that's good business um, advisors advising him, uh, strategically matching him into whatever it needs to be. Him fighting Bud. Listen, Bud for me is the pound for pound best at the minute. I don't know about all this Lomachenko and stuff and doing all this stuff. He's great also. But for me, I, I prefer Bud. Um, and in time, Bud will show the rest of the world what, 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 what he's up to. But I am, I'm a big Crawford fan. And there was no, there's, not, there's nothing wrong that Khan lost against him. It was always going to happen. So it was just one of them things. He made his money. And I think um, he's doing the right thing. And as we've seen, uh, K um, Kilbrook's still interested. So it is what it is. But don't you think that Amir Khan's been calling the public for, for too long now? 
Yeah. He's been conning us as boxing fans. In terms of what? Yeah, well, do you know what? It's just, it's, you know, it's just, it's just, he's not even trying. He didn't even try that. He's not just showing up. I mean, no, just. He's lost a good fight. He's got knocked out against yeah. Danny Garcia. Well, I mean, it's a loss. Danny Garcia is a big puncher. And the thing is this he was actually outboxing him. He was winning. Um, he got caught with a hell of a shot. And he managed to actually get up from that shot. And then the ref pulled it off. So, what fight are you saying that he didn't try? Terence Crawford. Oh, we talking about the leg shot. Mm, yeah, the well, no, he, no, he actually, he actually, he, he said no mask. See, he, 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 he hit. He in the groin or in the leg, um, yeah. and then he kind of. Do you believe that he? Do you, do you believe that he gave a good account of himself in that fight? Uh, to be, if, if truth be told, I can't really, I can't really, I can't really recall that fight too much. But as far as I was concerned, it didn't matter how it ended up. If he hit him in the in the knee, if he hit him in the thigh. If he hit him on his elbow, whatever, he was always going to lose, in my opinion. So it didn't make no, you know, like it didn't make no difference how he lost. Obviously, he went out and he didn't go out on his shield. I hear that, but for me, he was always going to lose that fight. So I didn't read too much into it. He got his payday. He went out. I went out. Obviously, he said, oh, it was a low blow." But when you look at the tapes, it showed that hit him in his fire. I don't know, but listen, he lost, and I knew he was always going to lose. Yeah, I think. He definitely trains, you know. He might be conning the public a bit now, you know, for the paycheck and this and that. But any boxer, let's go for any boxer out there, right? They always train, whether they're going for the paycheck or not. Because, like you say, D, right? Boxing ain't no game. It ain't no game. So if he don't train, he's going to get seriously hurt when you get into the ring. That's for any boxer as well. Giving up, giving up, right, yeah, in the middle of a fight. He's conning the public. Giving up, you you don't know what's going through his head at the time, or, or nothing like that. He might not be giving up. He might be so you, you just don't know. Yeah, I know it's unforgettable. Yeah, you shouldn't quit ever, ever, ever quit, ever quit. You should never quit. But you got to realise you can't say that a boxer does not train. You're not in his training camp. You're not in his training camp. You're not in his training camp. All right, listen to me, right? Yeah, the worst thing is unforgivable. As a boxer, is to quit. All right, Roberto Duran, right? Yeah, he got he got vilified um, by, um, by by his nation, right? Yeah, and the fact of the matter is, you don't quit in boxing. You don't. It's the worst thing you can do. You, you people pay good money to come and watch you, right? Yeah, they build up, they build their hopes and dreams in you, right? Yeah, they they, they you know they build up a fan base for them to, 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 to. Is that how you treat your fan base by quitting? Come on, man. I'm a con, man. That's no way to treat your fans. And people, you know what I mean? They believe in you, and you quit. That's it. <laughs> you don't quit, man. You don't quit. Do you? I agree, I agree with you. You never quit. Not, whether it's in boxing, any sport, you never give up. Boxing yeah? Boxing especially. But in any sport, even in ordinary life, you don't quit. You never quit. No. But what I was trying to say to you is you don't know how he's been training. You don't know. He, don't you don't know. You don't know. You don't get knocked out and quit. Yeah. I'd rather get knocked out and quit. Yeah, I would as well. But you don't, you can't judge someone on their training if you're not in their training camp. What do you think about it, Dean? That's a coward. No, that's nothing to do with me. I've got Ferrari. Yeah. Um, listen, you know what? There's a lot of fighters over the years that have um, lost in similar fashion. Uh, the Mexican was one of the first Nomas that uh, done it, and now you're saying, um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Duran, and now you're saying, obviously, Amir Khan. Well, no, well, uh, you know, um, Duran said Nomas first. It's one of them guys, it's going yeah. back too far for me it's right now, mate. Yeah. 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 So, what we're looking at is, I, I don't know how you look at it, I don't know, he feels he misjudged the time, I believe, I think he was saying in there, you know, the count. Um, um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit lost on all of that, but I, I don't think he's a quitter personally in terms of that, because he's come back and fought after that, you know, and managed to go the distance. Now he's coming back to fight again. Um, it's harsh to say, obviously, he's a, he's a quitter period and he doesn't have the bullets because he, he's done it many times, after time, after time, at a high level. Once a quitter, always a quitter. If you can do it once, you can do it again. And that's the, and, that, and, that, and that's how I feel about it. What's your thoughts? I'll just go over the same thing, like you, you know, we go over the over the same thing. No, if you can quit once, you can quit again. Yeah, of course, of course. If you if, once quit, always a quitter. You know, you should never, ever, ever give up. 
So I said before, not. Huh? He did give up. Yes, yes. He did give up and he shouldn't. Yeah, he gave up as well. Called it was a bit too harsh to um, sorry, I think the ref was a bit too harsh and stepped in too fast and just waved it on. Um, there was a little bit more fighting AJ when the ref was waving it off. I'm not sure, I like I said, I'm not going to pretend to remember the Amir Khan and Crawford what, fight. You know, AJ, AJ in that fight, it, 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 it to me that seemed there was like a little bit more, um, there was a little bit more resistance from AJ when the ref was um, waving off. He got up, he was up for the count. And then the ref was like, no, no, no. And he was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? So in that, I wouldn't say that. Obviously, he was hurt. He was buzzing. He was disorientated, maybe. But he still had the desire to fight and, uh, and the will to continue. And he got up four times, was it? Yeah, so I, I agree in certain, ex uh, uh, certain points in that. Um, yeah, he was up on his feet, but he was still holding on to the ropes. I mean, the ref was talking to him and he, was, he wasn't responding. So as a ref, you've got to look at people's care, you know? We keep on saying it, boxing's no game. If you're not responding, the ref's going to call it off. And uh, not to go off topic too much, but I don't think Anthony Joshua should have took the fight with Ruiz in the first place. No, he, sh he shouldn't have took it in the first place. He weren't prepared for it enough. You know, if I'm Joshua, I say it's, it weren't my fault that uh, Joel Miller uh, done all that and cheated. It weren't my fault. Give me a couple months, you know? and then I'll get back in the ring again. But you've got to study your opponent properly before you get in the ring with him. It's difficult when you've booked Madison Square Garden, everyone's bought their tickets, they've bought their, they've bought their flights, hotels and all that sort of stuff. It's difficult to just turn around and say, well, do you know what, give me a couple of months. It doesn't work like that. You know, these, these, these venues got to be booked like three, four months in advance. There's a lot of money been, been invested and stuff. And her's pulling his hair out. He's saying, we've got to get you a and stuff like that. So he's all right. It's just, it's just how it is. It's unfortunate. He was geared up for, for Miller. He got someone else, and it probably deflated him. And you know what I mean? It's hard to pick yourself up when you're, you're, when you're training for an opponent and you've got, you've got another opponent at the last minute. No, I do agree. Yeah, you can't just push it back. You know, there's a bit of inexperience for me, young Dove here, a bit of inexperience there. But it's, it's just, I'm, I'm just speaking how I would do it as well from, from, from my heart. At the end of the day, I would. I, Personally, I would refund everyone, and obviously you can't do that. That's just the way I look at it. I would refund everyone and, 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 and push it back. You can't do it, but obviously it's just, it would probably cause a lot of uproar. Yeah, so It would cause a lot of uproar and, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, a lot of manoeuvring around. So they obviously just thought it would be easier to find another opponent who was American, who was suitable, and they looked at Ruiz for his, his structure, his, um, how he looked on his appearance, not how his actual boxing ability was. So that was a, a you know, bad judgment from the, the team and his advisors and management. But listen, that's in the history books. We've got to give credit to Andy Ruiz, the new heavyweight champion of the world. And uh, we just got to look at that. But listen, guys, we're going to have to move on with that one. And we're going to talk about something different. We're going to talk about the football. A couple of days ago, the drubbing from Bayern Munich, Tottenham Hotspurs got. And I'm sure your Beautiful. man, Heavy D, is going to... Um, Gonna go off it. You see how happy he's got on his Arsenal T-shirt here. He, he's chomping yes. at the bloody bits here. <laughs> listen, mate. Listen, 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 right here. Listen to me. Karma is a bitch. That's all I gotta say, right here. Do you know what, right here? It's like the worst result in Champions League history. In history. Oh my God. And I'm hearing. I'm hearing stories about. You know this. This uh, disharmony in 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 the uh, in the team. Half the team ain't talking to each other. There's a rumour going about, I don't know if it's true, that Vachongan slept with, with um, Ericsson's wife. Uh, it, it's, it's actually a real rumour, honestly. Where did you find that from? No, it's true. No, on, no honestly. On, no, honestly. Seriously. No, it's seriously. No, no, no honestly. There's a serious, it's a half, half of the team ain't speaking to the other half of the team. So, and, and, and Pochettino, it, yeah, it, it, it's seriously. And there's a Pochettino, he can't control, he can't, he can't um, control the situation. He doesn't know what to do because uh, it's this disharmony. And this is what, if you notice, they, they lost against Colchester. Colchester. And now they've got beaten 7 2. Come on, there's got to be something going on there. There's got to be. But I'm loving it. I love it. I love it. It's great news, man. This is good times for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't get too carried away, obviously, because I. <laughs> Because obviously over two legs we got smacked up 10-2, I believe. Um, but that's a different story. Um, yeah, 
And it's a good thing that our old uh, Serge Nabry, if I say that right, scored four against them. So I'm ve very pleased with that. But no, as a manager, po listen, Pochettino's a great manager. You know, he's definitely better than Unai. Let's, let's put it that way. But it's not go. Yeah, let's not go. Let's not go off topic. I, I believe um, as a manager, Poch, if that happened. Poch either says to him, bang your heads together, I'm dropping you both, and you put in, you, they, they've got plenty of other players to go in and, and, and replace them. And you should, as a manager, you should be strong and be firm. Doesn't matter if you're the best player in the team, yeah, there's no I in team, yeah, you work as a team and you play well. Anyway, I'm not back in, I'm not back in Spurs, fuck that. <laughs> well, I'm an Arsenal supporter, obviously, so, you know, um, they're the other side of the fence. Um, and yeah, for me, I saw it and I was quite shocked because obviously they've been on a, quite a good run over the last few seasons um, so yeah it was quite it was quite exciting I thought right that's a bit of a cricket score isn't it and uh, I saw a few sad people on Instagram and I thought it'd be a good topic because I know you know this old Arsenal boy bloody hell he's got his um is it what, what, what's your bloody wig where's your blonde wig today David Louise. he's got his David Louise yeah, wig yeah, 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 no, and he's always on one so I thought if he brought this up he, 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 he'd, he'd be chomping out the bits he'd be happy um, you know, that was good. It was a good, it was a, it was a sad night for the other side of North London. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, they'll but come again. If the, if, listen, if the, if the shoe was on the other foot, I'm telling you, they would be, they would be. We wouldn't hear the end of it. We wouldn't hear the end of it. So, you know what, as I said, we've just got to just enjoy these times. Uh, I think it's going to get worse before it gets any better. Pochettino's going to be off. And I know, like I said, I grew up in Tottenham, so I've got a lot of Tottenham um, supporting friends, and they told me, they said, listen, you think you've got problems at Arsenal? Our problems are 10 times worse. And they, uh, they said, listen, a lot of Tottenham fans have told me that. said, we have got massive crisis at Tottenham. A massive. And that rumour is true, I'm telling you. Because what else could it be? And it's just it's been circulating for quite a while now. The last, the last few days, and Colchester, got beat by Colchester. And this, listen to me, you can't shag your teammate's wife. You can't do that, man. Come on, man. Where, where, where's it? Hold up, my friend. You ain't got no evidence of that. You need to calm down before a lawsuit gets you. That's what you need to do, buddy. You better calm down, my friend. They'll be after you. Yeah? I have to disagree whether um, whether you can't uh, shag your teammate's wife or not. It depends. If she's a salt, she's a salt. <laughs> who, who cares? Who cares? And, and, and listen, we're looking back take and... Team, <laughs> you take one for the team. Oh, you definitely did then, didn't he? But, um, no, no. Um, listen, right, there, there's a lot of things at Arsenal that need, need solving as well. Um, but you, you can't take it away, right? Right, we're not in the Champions League right now. We're in Europa League, right? But I say in any competition, you've got to be in it to win it. And Arsenal come in the semi-final and the, and the final. All right, we haven't won it yet, but we're in, the, we're in it to win it. You can't say coming to the semi-final and final next year we we haven't um, tried to win to win uh, the competition because we have. Tottenham got to the final, yeah, and and lost two 0 well, At least we got to the final and scored a fucking goal. Right, I'm gonna ask the people out there one question: Would you rather be Arsenal or Tottenham right now? Forget about doing the Champions League, right? Yeah, they have got crisis at Tottenham, right? Yeah, and I'm telling you, right, like, team spirit is gone. So I'm going to ask lot of people out there, would you rather be Arsenal or Tottenham at this, at this present moment right now? I don't know which one I'd rather be. Do you know what I mean? Like, we thought we ain't got as much problems as them. they got some serious problems. Serious. I'm not just saying that because I'm an Arsenal fan. It's a fact. Like, Colchester and beat 7-2, this is the biggest, the biggest beating in Champions League history. They've made history for the wrong reasons. Imagine all the shit teams that have gone through, all the shit teams that have gone through the Champions League and they, and, 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 and they got beaten the most. It's madness. It's a madness. Anyway. Yeah, well, uh, guys, I think uh, we'll wrap that up for the Double D podcast for this week. But, you know, it's been great. A few different topics from this young man here. Jake Dove Lions. And this guy here. Heavy D, a.k.a. The Boominator. The Boominator is back for Double D podcast. will never go away. Double D podcast. Signing out.